ఓం శాంతి సో విల్ రివైజింగ్ ఎస్టే సవ్యక్త మురళి దే వాజ్ అ గ్రేట్ రోమన్ హిస్టోరియన్ హుజ్ నేమ్ వాజ్ టాసిటస్ దిస్ టాసిటస్ హాజ్ రిటన్ a book and in that book the annals he has described about a great roman emperor it will be again a mistake to call that emperor great because that emperor was very very cruel he was people call him a madman his name was nero and tacitus has written in his book the annals that nero was so cruel that he used to call all the who's who of rome to his palace and he used to conduct lot of parties and feasts for those people and uh, during those festivities of elite people if suppose by evening there would not be any light so to illuminate that party what he used to do he used to call all the prisoners he used to call all those poor people of his country and he would make them stand on those stakes and set them afire so they used to burn and in that light of those prisoners of those poor people in that light the party would go on throughout the night they would enjoy and not only that he used to play his violin in that night so that's why there is a saying that which i told yesterday also that ro this nero was fiddling when rome was burning why i'm telling this story this is the tendency of a man who enjoys when others are suffering but the question is not of nero the question is of those guests nero's guests so one person is nero and others are those who are coming there and joining him and they are not saying anything and they are silent and they are not uttering a single word while they see that others are burning the poor the innocent people are burning but they are all silent so that is why this phrase has come nero's guests nero's guest means those people who don't do anything when there is a need to be done when there is a need to do something very important suppose ravan is nero and this whole entire world is burning and he is making the human souls to burn with vices who are we that is the question who are we if we are not doing anything to extinguish this fire if we are not doing anything to stop this fire then probably we are those nero's guests whenever in politics or everywhere anything mishap happens they use this phrase nero's guest just as recently in mumbai the elphiston bridge lot of people died in that stampede so again now the question has come who are nero's guest everybody the blame game has started some are blaming the railway officials some are blaming the politicians and everybody is trying to figure out who is nero's guest so who are nero's guest nero's guests are those people who are unconcerned nero's guests are those people who are not doing anything to assuage the calamities the fire that is going rampant in the world are we that are we those nero's guests if suppose we are not doing anything for this world probably we are those nero's guests so with that background we will try to understand this murli this murli is all about being a yogi baba is talking in detail about a yogi who is a rajyogi 
how he should be what he should be what he eats what he drinks how he talks how he behaves how he moves around in bhagavad gita there is one wo- there is one word stito pragya yogi an ultimate yogi pragya that word has come from pragya pragya is not being just a pandit pragya is not just knowledge pragya is a very higher word in sanskrit it means something it it is not just even the spiritual knowledge to become an intelligentsia is not to become a pragyavan pragya is something which is the culmination of the knowledge even the culmination of the spiritual knowledge the practical intelligence is sometimes called pragya the culmination of even the wisdom is called pragya so one is pragya another is gyan when gyan reaches the highest it is known as pragya so yogi who is stit pragya how he should behave that's what arjuna is asking to shri krishna in bhagavad gita in chapter 2 shlok number 54 he asks tell me what are the signs of yogi and from there from shlok 55 to 74 in those 20 shlokas god is telling about a yogi who is an yogi who should be called an yogi when you will say that a particular person is yogi what a yogi eats how much he sleeps how much he drinks all the qualities of a yogi in this murli also baba is describing about a yogi yesterday we saw this murli and we discussed this murli with different methods with different relationships from last 3 days we have been talking about this murli today i will just tell you something about different qualities a yogi should possess a yogi should have certain qualities so a yogi should have just as we say that we are going to become gods and goddesses of golden age and those gods and goddesses those deities they are all virtuous they are 16 celestial degree full so we will try to extract certain 16 points from this murli qualities of a yogi so what are the qualities of a yogi otherwise you know of how a yogi should be what are the qualities of a yogi when you will call a person a yogi hmm he is renunciate okay then his mind would be stable he is always stable in all the trials and tribulations of life no matter what upheavals are coming he is very much stable so stability that equipoise that equanimity of the mind that tranquility of the mind that that calm composed nature of the mind is the sign of a yogi then what else hmm humble. he is very humble actually in the list of divine qualities in bhagavad gita in chapter number 18 god has mentioned the list of divine qualities in that divine qualities fearlessness is one first and just near about that is humility if a person has got everything but suppose he has not become humble that person cannot be called a yogi so humility then detachment a yogi is very much detached mentally emotionally in all his relationships because without detachment one cannot become yogi this is such a such a important qualification of a yogi then what is hmm humility egolessness he is carefree yogi is carefree he is not bothered about future he is concerned only with the present he is concerned only with this moment he is not bothered about the past which is dead he is not bothered about the future which is which is yet not there which is just imaginary he is perfection in his karmas in his action but even while doing action there is inaction in action that's what is gita written in gita inaction in action he is detached from his action also he is like the lotus 
which also represents purity brahman dhyay karmani sangham tatva karoti yah lipyate na sa pape na he is untouched by sin he is like that lotus he is untouched by sin nothing touches him he does the work he does the actions he does all the good deeds but even those good deeds do not touch him and there is a spark of purity in his personality unbroken personality undivided purity unbroken brahmacharya that is the mark of a yogi then what else he is he is nashto moha he is destroyer of all the attachments his all attachment to this world has been destroyed he is no more attached to anything and he is living in this world only for the world benefaction nothing for his own self no his vested interest what is he is detached observer he is observing this world as a detached in a very detached manner his detached observership is a qualification of a yogi then he is focused yeah he is very happy in his life there cannot be any streak of an happiness anywhere touching his personality then what else qualification of a yogi unshakable in unmovable broad intellect he has a very broad intellect very bright intellect very large intellect he is broad minded generous magnanimous personality then what else yeah he is very much near to god he has a very close relationships with god then he is very simple then then he is devoted only to one then he is far sighted he knows what is going to happen in future he is always in that stage of trikal he knows what is present what is past and what is future so he is not easily fooled by any of these circumstances then he has tolerance he is the embodiment of tolerance we have to learn tolerance from two things or two persons one is earth and second is cow these are the two sig- symbols of tolerance yesterday's murli baba said these mothers are cow and i am the cowherd boy i am gopal and these are all cows so cows represent tolerance and earth represent tolerance and the word go means earth also and senses also and cows also so they represent tolerance then what else <coughs> he is beyond all the desire for name fame and glory he is beyond all this desire somewhere some vivekananda has said the worst of all the desires is the desire for fame for a yogi yogi has surmounted lust anger greed attachment even ego but then one thing remains the desire to become famous and that is the worst of all the desires then what else unlimited, unlimited uh, disinterest yeah that is known as vairag that is known as dispassion so these are the some of the things now come to the murli we will take out 16 points 16 qualifications of a yogi first cooperation first cooperation a yogi cooperates in that divine task of the lord in that supreme task of god god is carrying out his divine task god is carrying out his elevated task god is carrying out his spiritual task at this moment in this confluence age and yogi is someone who cooperates cooperates with his own intellect yoga cooperates with his own purity of the mind purity of the soul purity of the heart he cooperates with his pure mind with his pure intellect his purity is blessing for the world his purity is blessing for the entire nature his very existence on this planet earth is blessing for the earth so the first qualification of a yogi is his cooperation it is shown in bhagavatam that shri krishna is afflicting the mountain and all others 
are helping him with their little fingers somebody is holding stick it is shown that everybody is helping it is lord's it is his task of uplifting this mountain this govardhan of kaliyug and all others helped him actually he doesn't require anybody's help he alone is enough but still he takes help of everybody so the first qualification of a yogi is to cooperate so in that means in that way it also means that in no way we should not be non cooperative we will be non cooperative when we will have vicious thoughts we will be non cooperative when we will have waste thoughts we will be non cooperative when we are wasting our time this is the time of awakening this is the time of awakening the entire world which is lost in sleep and which is lost in slumber of ignorance it is our divine task to help god who has come on this confluence age who has come on this planet so check yourself or we need to check ourselves how much i am cooperating am i cooperating or in another way rather i am doing some disservice or becoming a hindrance in this task of world transformation god has come down on this planet earth and he has come to transform this world am i somewhere an hindrance my thoughts my feelings my emotion my temperament my behavior first second qualification of a yogi is tirelessness he is athak why he is tireless because his soul is charged with purity because his soul is charged with that divine intoxication so how can he get tired there is no question of any tiredness person gets tired only not because of work only when he is body conscious it is body consciousness that tires you baba has said so many times in sakar murli that if you are soul conscious and you go down till abu road you will not get tired so very so second qualification of a yogi is tirelessness if you do anything any service for that matter and with self respect or with soul consciousness and with internal calm and peace and with silence probably you will not get tired it is the it is the blabbering it is the chattering that tires you all the worldly jargon that goes on in your mind that tires you not the elevated thoughts thoughts of self respect thoughts of love of god whose task it is these thoughts if you work if you do your service you will never never get tired so the second qualification of the yogi is tirelessness third qualification zeal and enthusiasm he never loses his enthusiasm he is always enthusiastic he never gets nothing 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 dampens his spirit nothing is there no power in this world can throw that spirit into doldrums he is ever enthusiastic ever animated ever 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 moving in that dance of ecstasy the divine melodies always in his heart such non stop enthusiasm such unceasing enthusiasm is the mark of a yogi if we are lacking somewhere in enthusiasm this last seasons second murli 11th 15th november 2016 last season second murli 15th november 2016 baba said if you get tired if somebody is exhausted what you should do what you should do no last season second murli we revised it what you should do if somebody is tired where you should take that person hmm you take him and sh- take him to a yogi for 5 minutes take that person to a yogi for 5 minutes and his enthusiasm will come back so you have to seek the company of highly spirited yogis you have to seek the company of enthusiastic yogis because that company will color you otherwise how much what you will do you read murli you were in silence you did everything on your own but still you are not coming out of that listlessness 
unenthusiastic state of the mind you have to meet with such enthusiastic people so third mark is enthusiasm fourth speed fourth is speed a yogi always progresses with intense speed in gvds gyan yog dharna seva all the four gvds he is very his speed is very much not only in knowledge but also in yoga not only in yoga but all the dharanas not only in dharanas it you cannot say that i am very much busy in yoga and i am very much busy in reading and churning murlis that's why i couldn't do uh, service spiritual contemplation should never be made an excuse for material negligence spiritual contemplation should not be made an excuse for material negligence this statement has come in some yogananda's book autobiography of a yogi the first ever autobiography written by a yogi he said that i did not study for my exams i thought that my guru will help me but i was wrong i failed <laughs> because you cannot give spiritual excuses i invoke divine powers to pass in examination grace of god he has said another place grace of god will help you in everything except passing examination without studying so it's study so you cannot make spirituality i was doing yoga that's why i neglected my service you cannot give spiritual excuses dadi's class was there that's why i did not do service service first sir when service calls you have to give up everything you give up everything no matter even if baba is coming in shantivan but if service is calling you you have to give up give up that also baba will come to you one person has an experience he was an elect- electrician electrician and he was on that pole doing some electric work and it was his duty but baba had come in shanti one and he wanted to go but it was his it was the seva which was given to him and while doing that repairing work on that electric pole he had the divine vision of shiva baba there only <laughs> so service first so the fourth thing is speed then fifth fifth is easy and constant yoga easy and constant yoga he will not have to make efforts he will always have easy and constant meditation he will always in the state of not doing but being meditation is a state not of doing it's a state of being so that is yoga another is next sixth close relationships with god the mark of a yogi is he is having all the relationships with god baba used the word chatrak chatrak is that that bird which is thirsty for those rains it is not it will never drink any other water it wants only that rain so these are the souls who are having very much close relationships with god as if they and god are united they are combined and none can separate them they live in that state of perpetual union they are spiritual couples they are close friends of god that's why baba comes and says hello handshake he does handshakes with them so the mark of a yogi is having close relationships with god next the mark of a yogi is happiness mark of a yogi is happiness he is always in a state of happiness no wave of sorrow can come to them no trace of sorrow can come to them because they know that they are embodiment of happiness because they know that they are children of the ocean of happiness so all the all the sorrowful emotions all the all these emotions that give or bring pain grief suffering misery agony in life have gone now they'll stay in that state of perpetual happiness such perennial happiness so the mark of a yogi is happiness next the mark of a yogi is embodiment of attainments prapti swarup they don't have i want this i want that i want this i want that you will never be satisfied with this worldly things chitta pragya yogi in gita is described as a one who is satisfied with the soul his satisfaction is not anywhere outside of the soul this world cannot make you happy at all 
None of these things can make you happy. Vivekananda has said somewhere a very, very bold and very strong statement. He said, I hate this world. I hate this world, this nightmare, this dream. With its fair faces and false hearts. With its sanctified shopkeeping. Black guardianism. I hate this world. I don't want anything of this world. Nothing of this world can ever satisfy me. This is all mere shopkeeping is going on. This is all fair faces and inside there is a falsity in the hearts. Falsehood trade is going on. So I don't want anything of this world. Such intense spirit of Vairag for this world. We don't want anything of this world. This is an old world, Baba says. Old dilapidated house. The entire world is in shambles. We don't want this. It is about to get destroyed. The destruction is around, around the corner. So, Yogi is someone who is self-satisfied. Yogi is someone who is embodiment of all the attainments. Next, Yogi is successful. Embodiment of success, Siddhi, Swarup. All success come to him on its own, on their own. In that stage of success. Then Yogi is someone who is very powerful. Yogi is someone who is Powerful. His stage is very powerful. Then yogi is someone who is having constant and stable stage. So these are the six qualifications here. First, we told four and these are six. Then next, the qualification of a yogi is renunciation. Tyag. You cannot think of become a, becoming a yogi without renunciation. If you want to enjoy all these niceties of the world, if you want to enjoy everything of this world and you think of becoming a yogi, it's not possible. Yogi is someone where there is a burning vairag in his heart. Yogi is someone who is absolutely disinterested in anything of this world. He is in the world but not of this world. That is the stage of a yogi. The internal stage of a yogi is one of total renunciation. Internal renunciation. It's not the renunciation for show off. It is not to just to show people that I am this or I am that. No. His renunciation is real renunciation. His renunciation is arising out of that internal wisdom. His renunciation is arising out of that internal deep love of God. Because he feels that before that love of God, because before that glorious love of this God, this world, vanity of vanity, all is vanity. This is what his internal state of the mind is. To what extent I have become Tyagi? To what extent I have become Vairagi? To what extent I have become such unlimited renunciate? To become such unlimited renunciate is the mark of a yogi. So that is one. Then, Yogi is someone who is world is self transformer. Twelfth, self transformation. He is someone who does self transformation. Baba said, "You came to this land of transformation, Parivartan Bhumi, and if you don't get transformed, this is such a pitiable affair. You come here. This is the land of transformation. Make efforts to transform yourself." To bring about that internal metamorphosis, that internal sea change. It, coming here should be a turning point of life. You come here and everything changed. Not just who come for the first time, but even who come again and again. Every time you come to Madhuban, a new change should come to you. Every time you come to Madhuban, uh, you should have some new planning for self-change, self-analysis, self-talk self-accounting, retrospection, introspection. Uh, you have to enter into that cave of introspection, cave of solitude, cave of silence, and come out from there totally transformed. So the mark of a yogi is, he is self-transformer. Next, mark of a yogi is, he is experimenter in the lab of, in the laboratory of practice. He is the one who experiments. Every day he experiments. Where does he experiment? In the laboratory of practice. His life itself has become a laboratory. 
Mahatma Gandhi has written in his autobiography all the in detail he has described everything. His life is as if a laboratory and he is experimenting with truth every now and then. He is seeing, I have done this, I have done this, I have done this, what is the result? What I should have done, what I did not, why sh- I should not have done. He is examining himself. This entire, you know, everyone should write his own or her autobiography. And every day we should write. Our autobiography should be like a, as if a letter to God. Before we end the day, before sleeping every day, write a letter. It should start with Baba and then write down. Whatever you did, the whole day you write down. I am not telling you just to write down the yoga chart. Writing yoga chart is different. But to write your whole uh, routine of the day, that is known as diary writing. Just write down. Baba, today morning I got up at 3.30. Then I did yoga. My yoga was not very powerful. If it is powerful, you write that also. Everything you write down. Today I went... There was a Dadiji's class. Then in that class, I heard this was a very good point, which Dadi said. Then there was a class in Madhuban. Then I did this seva. You write down everything and at last, at last write down good night. So this is a, your daily letter to Baba. I am not telling you. To write chart is very difficult. When you tell people to write chart, they give up. They write for a few days and they give up. But yes, diary writing you can always do. If you go to founding father of America, uh, Benjamin Franklin, he has written, he used to, he has that habit, he had that habit of writing his diary every day. He would write down, he had made the list of 13 divine virtues and then he used to check at night whether I was humble, did I get angry today, everything. That that was his, long back in 17th century he did that. Writing diary. So, writing. So, make this life an experiment, a lab lab of practice. Experimenter in the laboratory of practice. This is the mark of a yogi. Next mark of the yogi is he is detached observer. Baba said, see yourself as a detached observer. Look at yourself as a detached observer. This is me and this is me. I am as if I am not that. I am seeing myself, how I behave, how I talk, how I move, how I sing, how I dance. What are the different poses of the mind? Sometimes tall, sometimes small, sometimes heavy. What I am? Who I am? What I am? Where I am? See yourself. See your different poses. See the different uh, uh, postures. See the different uh, appearances or countenances of your own self. As if there is a mirror. And see in that mirror. Recently, yesterday's, day before, Saturday's were done. Blessing. Baba said, your actions are mirror. You are mirror. Your actions are mirror. See in them. Whether they are like Brahma Baba's action. So check. Next mark of a yogi is, a yogi is, last two, 15 and 16. A yogi is, from the second murli, he is someone who is always in his self-respect. Self-respect Swaman. You are the smile on the lips of God. You are the jewel on his forehead. You are that bead in the garland of the garland of victory which is around his neck. You are the light of his eyes. You are the golden chancellor who take golden chance. You are the ones who are the close friends of God. You are the ones with whom God comes and does handshake. You are the spiritual couple. You are the brides and he is the groom. He has given so many samans, so many self-respect. So the mark of a yogi is self-respect. Last, tell me the last now. Sixteenth. No, one is remaining. Then you must have written something more. Last and then we will finish this class. The last mark of a yogi. Yeah, Shilpavan. Anywhere from the Murli. Tell that quality, some virtue, from somewhere, from the Murli. Is it there in Murli? Tell from the Murli. Okay, then what else? Responsibility, okay, yes. Then? Yeah? Love that we will include in close relationships with God. 
so that uh, love for god comes in that which we already cover self transformation we already said one is remaining hmm? mark of a yogi courage courage baba said these sisters they are so courageous they are courageous without courage can you expect to become a yogi you need lot of courage it is not a cake walk to give up the world all the pleasures and all the frivolities all the luxuries of the world and to to tread this path of thorns this is walk alone path ekla chalo re nobody is there with you you walk alone and you have only one supreme support one divine providence so this is courage so these are the 16 different qualities of a yogi okay om shanti